Adderall is one of the most commonly prescribed ADHD medications on the market, and over 24 million prescriptions are written for it each year. So in this video, we're going to break down the must-know facts about this medication so you can be better informed when deciding whether or not to start it. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'm also going to fill you in on what I like the most and least about this medication. So the first thing I need you to know about this medication is that it has both a brand name and a generic name, and physicians will use these names interchangeably. So Adderall is the brand name, and mixed amphetamine salt is the generic name. Now, let's break down how this medication works. Adderall is considered to be a stimulant medication, and when we're talking about stimulants, there are two different types to take into consideration. There's those that fall under the methylphenidate group and those that fall under the amphetamine group. Adderall is an amphetamine-based product that is composed of a 3 to 1 ratio of D and L amphetamine salts, hence the name mix amphetamine salts, okay? So at a basic level, Adderall works by increasing the activity of the neurotransmitters dopamine and norepinephrine in certain parts of the brain. Okay, so what does Adderall treat? It's FDA approved for both ADHD and narcolepsy in adults. In kids with ADHD, the short-acting version is approved in those three and older, while the long-acting version is approved in those six and older. And then it's approved for the treatment of narcolepsy in those ages 6 to 17 years old. Some off-label uses include obesity and treatment-resistant depression. Now let's get into the different formulations and dosing strategies for this medication. Adderall comes in both immediate release and extended release versions. The immediate release is a tablet that you take one to two times per day, with each dose lasting around four to six hours, okay? Typically what we see is that patients will take their first dose after getting up in the morning, and then their second one somewhere around lunchtime. Dosing generally starts somewhere between two and a half to five milligrams twice daily, depending on the age of the patient. And then the doses are increased in two and a half to five milligram increments each week until symptoms are adequately treated. Generally, 40 milligrams total is what's recommended for this medication if being used to treat ADHD and 60 milligrams per day for narcolepsy. Now, the extended release version is really interesting in how it works. This comes in a capsule and the capsule holds two different types of beads. 50% are immediate release and the other 50% are delayed release. And so the delayed beads are designed to release medication after about four hours. And what this does is mimics the effects of the two doses of the short acting Adderall, which allows you to only have to take this medication once per day in the mornings. Not only that, those who struggle with swallowing pills can open up the capsules and sprinkle them on applesauce. Just make sure to swallow the beads whole instead of chewing them because chewing them can screw up that release mechanism of those long acting beads. The effects of Adderall XR can last anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, and the peak is at around the 6 to 8 hour mark. And when first starting the medication, we usually start at a dose of 5 to 10 milligrams per day, and we'll go up in 5 to 10 milligram increments each week until the ADHD symptoms are adequately controlled. And the max dose is 30 milligrams per day. And remember, the goal with any medication is to find the lowest effective dose. Now, let's talk real quick about some situations that commonly pop up. What we'll see is that a patient will be put on the Adderall XR, and this won't last long enough throughout the day. So for example, say a teenager takes the medication in the morning before going to school, and then it wears off right around when classes end, right? It's great that the coverage lasted the whole school day, but what happens in the after hours for things like homework and after school activities when there's no longer coverage of ADHD symptoms? What we'll sometimes do is give a booster. So what this means is that we'll add a dose of the short acting Adderall in the afternoon to help extend the length of time that the medication is active in the body. And what this does is it helps give a few extra hours of medication coverage throughout the day. Another situation we commonly see is that someone is initially put on the short acting Adderall, but wants to try to switch over to the long acting. And this is a very simple transition. When switching, all you have to do is calculate the total daily dose being given with a short acting and give that dose in the long acting form. So for example, if someone is taking the Adderall IR 10 milligrams twice daily, you just switch them over to the Adderall XR 20 milligrams once daily. Okay, so what are Adderall's most common side effects? When looking at the FDA label, the top five side effects reported in clinical trials in kids and teens include loss of appetite, trouble sleeping, stomach aches, mood swings, and weight loss. With adults, the top five include dry mouth, loss of appetite, insomnia, headaches, and nervousness. Now, more serious but less common side effects can include things such as cardiovascular events, increases in blood pressure, psychiatric adverse events such as psychotic or manic symptoms, growth suppression, seizures, or blurred vision. When someone is put on Adderall, it's ultimately unknown exactly how long they'll need to be on it. When treating children in particular, the doctors, parents, and teachers will often work together and collaboratively to determine what's appropriate for each individual. Okay, what are my thoughts about this medication? What I like most 
is that it comes in both short-acting and long-acting formulations, and this allows for really good dosing flexibility and can help us tailor the treatment to the individual. Also, while it's not my personal common practice to treat super young children with stimulants, the short-acting version really hits some of those younger ages given that it's FDA approved all the way down to the age of 3 years old. So if we need to use a stimulant for some reason, we have the ability to do so. Something that I dislike about this medication is that because it's roughly twice as potent when you compare it milligram to milligram with methylphenidate based products, some patients have troubles tolerating it, right? This extra kick can lead to things such as jitteriness, worsened anxiety, or even irritability when initially starting it. And the other thing that bothers me is the fact that Adderall is probably the most abused and diverted out of all the stimulant medications out there. And I've had multiple patients try to get on my schedule and try to obtain it from me without a formal diagnosis of ADHD. And remember, this is a class 2 controlled substance, so not happening, my friend. Now, if you feel like Adderall is a good option for you, make sure to talk to your physician more about it. Now click that top video if you want to learn more about Vyvanse, which is another commonly prescribed amphetamine-based stimulant used to treat ADHD.